So hello everybody. So here, let me start my talk with an event happened during my lunch. So someday I was enjoying the nice lunch, but suddenly the coffee was too hot and I didn't notice that. So in panic, I had my coffee spilled, which wets and stains my shirt. To make things worse, I dro dropped the coffee cup onto the floor, and the coffee soon splashed onto the carpet. My next move was rushing into the bathroom to wash my shirt, and as I finished, I ran out of water, which trickles and drips from my shirt. So as we see here in our everyday life, it's really often to see wet cloth. And in a movie, life could get more dramatic. For example, here, this man was enjoying his yogurt, but suddenly his <laughs> wife just poured water onto his poor head, making his hair and claws wet. So what if we have a character in film or animation, and we want this character interacts with liquid? So last year, we did wet hairs, but apparently we don't only want naked characters. Our characters should have claws, but wet claws can have very different outlook than wet hairs. So for example, the liquid can get its absorbed into the sheet of fabric, and liquid may propagate through the fabric, and finally drips off from the fabric. So we need a different method to handle liquid fabric interactions. Also, personally, we didn't derive the physics between the liquid and solid from the first principle. So this year, we want to work toward a principled model for two-way coupling. Also, we want a unified physics that uh, we can handle various phenomena related to wet fabrics. And third, we need an efficient method uh, for the numericals off. So that's our paper this year, a multi-skill model for liquid fabric interactions. To explore this topic, let's begin with a continuum representation of fabrics. So here is a photo of woven fabrics. If we put this under microscope, we can see all the yarns, and if we zoom in more closely, we may see all individual fibers. So the entire fabric is composed of individual strands bundled into thin oriented fibers. And in computer animation, various fabric models have been proposed. For example, in large scale, we can model fabric as a surface that has some thickness. Or if we want more details, we can model them as individual yarns. Or if we really want to be hardcore, we can model the fibers, although it's usually considered intractable for simulation. But even with these geometries, how could we interact them with liquid? If we just set them as boundary conditions, it could be too complicated for yarns and fibers and too thin to capture even just modeling them as surface. So instead, in this project, we take a continuum model where we model the continuum equivalent for the fabric. For example, if we model fabric as a thick surface, then only part of its volume is occupied by these fibers, and we solve the dynamic of these volumes. So we can define volume fraction and porosity to describe how much solid or impetus space is inside a unit volume of porous media. And when there's fluids comes in, this tiny pocket inside and between these fibers uh, can collect fluids and are largely responsible for the wetting behavior. In summary, we model fabric as mixtures instead of using boundary conditions. And then we can characterize different mo uh, microstructure with several scalar fields, such as the volume fraction or saturation. So with such representation, we're able to handle fabric with different mass density by calculating the buoyancy for partially saturated parts media. And besides buoyancy, we can handle drag force and the capillary pore pressure from the continuum representation, which have an analytical form that can define on local microstructures. And when the cloth is submerged into liquid, the fabric can absorb liquid into its pores and uh, vice versa, where we have uh, liquid drips from the cloth when the liquid detaches. And these effects are treated with a continuum representation. And the liquid may also propagate on cloth, where we need the physics model for this flow inside the fabric. 
we show a quasi-static model can work well. And finally, we implement a splitting scheme to solve the equations. So these contributions correspond to what we want, a unified principled physics model for liquid fabric mixture and an efficient numerical solver. So with these contributions, we're able to simulate rich varieties of liquid fabric interactions. The basic scenario here is the water splash on a mesh-based cloth. When the liquid has high velocity, it can penetrate through the cloth from one side to another. But as it's slowed down by viscous drag, it can attach to the cloth surface and start to slip. And more than just one kind of cloth, we can simulate wet cloths with a wide range of parameters. Here we show from left to right, the number of threads is increased. Fabrics with higher number of threads are less possible to be soft by water and can become dried more easily since less water can stay there. And more than just soft cloths, our method are able to handle stiff materials. For example, here we show pouring water on a porous, non-woven plastic sheet that has much higher Young's modulus and higher Poisson ratio. And more than the permeable case, we're also able to handle the case where the liquid is sufficiently viscous and the drag force is large to prevent the liquid from going through the cloth. And more than just triangular meshes, our method can also handle geometries made by different elements. Here we show a wet hand-woven fabric made by individual yarns. And please remember that all of this above are be able to handle in our unified physics model and solved by the same numerical solver. So previous methods on wet cloths mostly address only some specific aspects, but they are very inspiring to our method. And more importantly, people previously proposed methods to simulate mixtures. For example, uh, moistures as well as a wide range of multi-fluids phenomena. And more recently, there are works simulating pore sand and water, which can be very predictable for some engineering applications. And our methods are greatly inspired by this previous works. So let's briefly start to review the theory of simulating mixtures, namely the mixer theory. The mixer theory is a continuum theory popular in soil mechanics. Before the World War II, a preliminary version of the mixer theory was used to design solid dams. But we found this theory for solid dam can be also descriptive for the dynamics of wet fabrics. And here we have a piece of non-woven cloth. If we cut it and reveal its cross-section and zoom in, we see its porous structure. And if we fill it with liquid and further zoom in, we can have the inertia of the solid phase balanced by the internal stress of the solid matrix, the axonal force, and interaction force between solid and liquid phase. And similarly, for the liquid phase, its inertia is balanced by the internal pressure of the liquid phase, the axonal force, and interaction force between solid and liquid phase. And finally, we have the incompressible condition for the entire mixture, which says there's a pressure to make the divergence of the combined velocity as zero. So it's apparent that correctly modeling the dynamics depends heavily on correctly handling the interaction forces and the incompressible condition. So let's firstly consider the saturated mixture. The interaction force is really composed by two types of force, the pressure force, which in charge of buoyancy, and the drag force, which in, uh, includes viscous drag uh, due to frictional effect between the liquid and solid phase, and inertial drag, uh, which is caused by the turbulence around the solid phase. These are important since we find that correctly handled buoyancy and drag force will dramatically increase the possibility. For example, here we compare the simulation with and without buoyancy force applied to the cloth using fabrics with different mass densities. With the correct pressure gradient applied to the fabrics, 
the left one rises, the middle one drifts, and the, the right one sinks. Also, the nonlinearity of drag force has a significant impact. The most obvious distinct visual phenomena here is the formation of kinks around the regions where the relative velocity is large, which also appear in real experiments. For unsaturated mixtures, additionally, the pressure force also includes capillary suction. So here, the capillary pressure is simply the difference between the liquid pressure and the air pressure. And we demonstrate the effect where zero pro pressure is applied when the contact angle is 90 degrees. There's no wicking effect, and the liquid is less attracted to the cloth. And we also have a, a nice uh, numerical model to solve this physics. The cloth and yarns are too thin to construct a grid that exactly matches their scale. But we also want to simulate liquid propagating on the cloth. So instead of simulating as a whole, we propose a two-scale framework. So firstly, a staggered grid is used to simulate the bulk liquid and the liquid particles used for the Lagrangian advection. And secondly, the solid vertices and uh, elements are used for the unmanifold parse flow. For the power flow, we need to solve a convection diffusion equation on mesh or rods. So if we take our momentum equation of liquid and incompressible condition from the mixture theory, ignoring the inertia of liquid since we assume the liquid inside the cloth or yarn is creeping flow and substitute the momentum into the incompressible condition, we'll get a quasi-static equation of liquid, which is just a convection diffusion equation over the saturation field SR. In other words, we can simply solve this equation to evolve the saturation field over time on the cloth or yarn manifold. And to discretize this equation, we need to define differential operators on mesh and rods. Here we have three types of elements, where the cloth is modeled as triangular mesh, the yarn is modeled as sequence of cylinders, and the cloth yarn jun uh, junction vertex is used for rack or tail. To define discrete differential operators, we associate these elements with finite volume computed in te typical barycentric style. With this weighting scheme, we can then define discrete operators and solve the equation. So here we compare our diffusion model with real experiments. Although we cannot capture the capillary uh, perfectly, we may have a similar quantitative result. Since we have simulated the cloth yarn joint, we show that our model can also handle scenario involving both cloth and yarn. We splash a ball here uh, onto the fuzzy cloth that has many short strands protruding from its surface. The cloth has a stiffer visual look than a regular cloth and absorbs more water, and also the drag force is stronger. We also need to solve equations for the mixtures on the Eulerian grid, and we introduce a novel semi-implicit integration. So after discretization and evaction, we have three equations. The momentum equation of solid and of liquid and incompressible condition. So as we see here, the pressure is coupled with velocity by divergence-free and pressure gradient, while the two velocity is coupled by drag force. Note, note that we have a non-symmetric system. It tends to be ill-conditioned because we usually have large drag force, which makes the off-diagonal term very large. So how we solve this challenge? We notice only the, the only thing non-diagonal is the top left, there is a Jacobian for internal forces. So what about we remove this thing? Because the block upper left now only contains diagonal matrix, we can do a Gauss elimination to remove the off-diagonal terms. And then we get a large non-symmetric matrix, and the solid velocity gets decoupled from the liquid velocity. And because the top left block contains only diagonal terms, we can perform a sure complement to insert the liquid and solid velocity into the pressure equation. So now we have the only unknown is the pressure at next time step. The middle term is diagonal, and thus the left-hand side is symmetric, 
positive and definite. This is actually a Poisson equation and can be easily solved with any iterative Poisson solver. So now with the pressure in hand, we then insert it back to the original equation for solid and liquid velocities. To handle stiff material, we again integrate solid velocity implicitly for stability. So in summary, we convert a fully coupled, large, non-symmetric, and ill-conditioned system into three independent, smaller, symmetric, positive definite system, which are much easier to solve, but at the cost of losing some incompressibility. Although in practice, we didn't observe artifact due to this. So I have shown lots of results before. In the following, I'll show an additional interesting result. So with this numerical framework, we are able to simulate liquid coupled with rather complicated ge geometries. Here we simulate a tau with yarns growing out from its surface. We can see there's dripping and splashing during tightening. So there are several future works. For example, we can have better parameter capturing. We can have a better cohesion model, also better capture the fine scale liquid bridge. And similarly, we may have better preconditioner when solving the fabrics. So we have preprint, video, source code released on our website where the repository contains source code for two-way coupling of mixtures, cloth and yarn simulator, liquid simulator, NPM collision handler, and Houdini projects for surfacing and rendering of odd examples above. Thank you.